have the cosmetics. Now, traditionally, Team Fortress 2's Smismas updates haven't been strictly Christmas or even winter themed. Only in recent years did Valve start treating Smismas uh, like a wintertime cool. Scream Fortress. I suspect that in their attempts to Ready. Scream Fortressize Smismas, Valve thought that tacky Christmas costume pieces would tickle everyone's fancy. But, much to their chagrin, no one wants these. Sure, historically, we've received some exceptions. A little festive fun has always been appreciated, but never as an overwhelmingly tacky majority. So, without further delay, these are the cosmetics that we selected for a hypothetical winter case. We tried our best to represent every class, but we threw in a few multi-class options as well. For the scout, we have the fast Let me know when you're ready, bro. Watching your videos. Get up. Yeah. For Soldier, we have the Rocketeer of the Rockies, a set of three individual items. For Pyro, we have the Frontline Firebug. You guys picked it again, so it showed up once more. For the Heavy, we have the Moscow Mafioso, a set of three individual items, including a really sleek vest. For the Demo Man, we have the Trigger Happy Bomber, a set of two items. For the Engineer, we have the last Conager, a set of two items, the desk engineer, and the investor's vest. For the spy, we have the Strasbourg scholar, and the hellswinger, a set of three items. How is this, is this Christmas cosmetics? I don't get it. How is this Christmas, bro? Well, desk engineer works works for me, bro. It looks, I like that spy outfit, it looks pretty good. We have the Strasbourg Scholar and the Hellswinger, a set of three items. That's Hellsinger, the animated, nice. For the medic, we have the Scrooge McDock, the Uber Villain, and the Dirty Work, which is also an engineer item. Finally, for the sniper, we have the Aged Assassin, a set of three individual items. And then for our multi-class options, we have the Country Comfort, the Tundra Trucker, and the Nuclear Fashion. Y'all picked the Oppenheimer slop, so it got in there. Alright, next up, we have the Unusual Effects. Now I'm sure Trader Mains are chomping at the bit to see how they're gonna make their money this year. Now historically, Unusual Effects were not treated like hats. Valve eventually realized they could dump 20 new effects into the game three times a year and entice players into engaging with FOMO content. Thanks to this, we have an so many effects, of repetitive, uninspired, and frankly, terrible unusual effects. So, in our efforts to mitigate these problems, here is our small, limited, but high quality pool of unusual selections that I believe would be great additions to the game. Some winter themed, some not, but all very unique in their own right. And no, there are no unusual taunt effects, because I believe these giant gaudy particle animations are one of the worst additions TF2 has ever received. Arcane Halo. Pretty simple Halo effect, I dig it. Sleepyhead. Yeah, it's kinda cute, you guys picked it. Sparkler. Not terrible. Moonbeams. Hey, this one showed up again. Personally, my favorite effect of the bunch, but hey, y'all picked it, so here you go. Dreamy Moon, reminiscent of Kirby. And finally, Chilly Wintry Night. Alright, moving on to what I believe are the most important additions at this stage of TF2's lifespan. Maps. Given that Valve is completely hands-off with this game, maps are the only new gameplay experiences that we receive. Therefore, they should be of the utmost quality. And traditionally, tradition seems to be the overarching theme for this video, traditionally, maps were not treated like hats. Maps were added sparingly as very polished gameplay experiences, and not mass dumped into the game three times a year to entice players into engaging with FOMO content. I've already explained why it's not healthy to receive 30 maps in one year, but said again briefly, an oversaturation of maps bloats the game and spreads the player base even thinner than it already is. Not to mention many newer maps are of questionably low quality, and Smismis has been especially brutalized when it comes to poor map selection. Oh, that's map is so adding some of the worst maps in TF2's history, including someone's first ever map that Eric saw presence on and said, "Yeah, fuck it, that's good enough." You you can't make this shit up, man. So, to bypass all that bullshit, I've selected two. Yes, I have selected 
two maps for consideration. I made these picks myself because I can't pull my audience. I won't know if they've played these maps. I don't know if the maps they've selected are actually play tested. I won't know if they only looked at the thumbnails and said, yeah, that looks good, and then sent it my way. I've picked two maps that I know for a fact have been extensively play tested, and I can assure you they are of insanely high quality and very fun from my own experiences and customer testimonials. The first map, we have Krampus. If we're going to get more Vscript content, this is how it should be handled. Vscript should focus on revitalizing existing game modes instead of turning TF2 into Gary's Mod or fucking Roblox. And Krampus does exactly that, with a fresh take on a Halloween boss, except this time for Christmas. And everything was built from scratch, by the way. The map, the layout, the boss, the modeling, everything. It's not just a reskin of an existing map or an existing boss. Everything built from scratch. This map is That's very incredibly good. well polished and is my pick as the official Smithsmiths exclusive edition for this year. Now, the second map, King of the Hill Snowbank, a winter reskin of an existing map called Databank. Frankly, this should be the official version, because this design feels way more TF2 than its predecessors. Uh, I've played on both versions, the what? flow is essentially the same, but Snowbank oh, just looks I, uh, so much nicer. Snowbank is the perfectly sized King of the Hill map that simultaneously doesn't uh, feel Yo, too I? or too cramped. No way, dude, their no way, playing Spy. Flank, what the fuck? Good pathways, some decent Zesty, since when do you play Spy? Just really good. This map would be perfect as a new, permanent addition to the rotation. I would love to see it in-game. Okay, up next we have the Taunts. Now, controversial opinion. I believe that Taunts are the best when they are, by definition, Taunts. You know, quick, jeering actions you throw out after getting a kill, and not these 5 to 15 second Fortnite emotes or these goofy looping activities like go-kart races or band practice. I think taunts should be added sparingly, but because we're going to get more anyways, I've picked a few that are genuine taunts. And, uh, not this. I've selected two taunts, not a few, two taunts, and the first, we have So Close, Speaks for Itself, and The Snapshot. Do I even need to say anything? Yo, dude, that's All nice. Right. I like the that. Final, I like that. And my favorite part of an update, we have I'm gonna I'm gonna hey, Dude, look... that's perfect because bro, you can do the fucking meme. Snap, that's going to my cringe spy compilation. That's going to my fry compilation. It's perfect, bro. TF2 skins. That's no mystery to anyone who's been here for a while. I think skins are a great addition that adds another layer of tasteful customization, well, sometimes. And traditionally, TF2 skins were more widely praised when they look like weapons and not tacky grade school notebook covers. This is the main reason why holiday war paint cases are generally stigmatized. Back in 2017, they started as generic cases with decent variety and didn't strictly adhere to a holiday theme. But then after this point, Valve strictly kept war paints as holiday themed for whatever fucking reason. These cases typically only have one or two skins that are widely praised. And I don't think it's actually him playing. And then, out of the blue, Valve released the summer twenty. I think the person who's playing the spy right the now, it's 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 not this dude, it's somebody else. The best performing war paint collection in the game's history. Now, why is this? This is because most of the skins in that case kept weapons looking like weapons and not fucking holiday themed McDonald's toys. So, here are the skins that we've selected for a hypothetical case. We have Power Control, Soaring Slugger, Western Rose, the Capital Asset, Wow. Suite, After Wait, dude. Rose, Capital Asset. This one looks very good, by the way. Like Executive it. Suite, After Hours, Fire Squad, Bowling Blitz, Building Site, Manco Chillbox, Clever, Special Reserve, Warhead, Polar Huntsman, Winter Royal, and Chop Shop. And boom, that's it. If you guys like any of these cosmetics, be sure to click the links in the description below. Go vote on them on the workshop. Show these guys your love because all of this stuff would be infinitely better than what we normally receive. Please, God, let let Eric Smith just like like just look at the workshop for a brief moment and like have a shred of thought and consideration to what he's adding and not just throw a fucking dart at a wall and say, yeah, fuck it, that's good enough.
least a little bit of quality, a little bit of curation would go so far. Ugh, if, if they're not gonna fix the fucking bots, if they're not gonna fix the fucking cheaters, if they're not gonna do anything else for this game, like I said earlier, at least give us good fucking toys. Once again, check out the description for all the links to this content. Go vote on it. Go show it your love. Pray to God we get good stuff, and I'll see y'all later. Fuck cheaters, dude. All of them. Thief the cheaters have the most fragile ego I've ever seen.